Here's an exam question on using r sine x plus or minus alpha. Um, it's a very typical exam question. If you look at any C3 paper from the old modular syllabus, you'll see a question looks pretty much the same as this. This one's actually from the international paper in C3-4 in 2017. Before we do the question, um, a, a question that students often ask is, are you always told this? For example, could you just be given this equation and asked to solve it? Um, the answer is that in in, old, in the old uh, modular syllabus the, with the C3 exam, you were always told this. Okay, so it's, it's likely you will be told uh, this and it's likely you'll get a question in this form. However, in the new linear syllabus uh, that you're doing, um, it's possible that you could just be asked to solve solve this without any help. Um, so you do need to, it's possible that you will need to work out uh, what form to write this in. <coughs> and to, to think about that, if you have sine x and then a minus, the only uh, addition formula that's going to give you that is when you do sine x minus alpha. If you think about the previous uh, the previous example we did on, on the other video, um, the question on that one, it had three cos x minus four sine x. And if it's a cos x at the front and then a minus, the only expansion that's the only addition formula that's going to give you that is to use uh, cos cos x plus alpha. Okay, so you would use r cos x plus alpha for that one. If it's a plus, as the um, other example on the the previous video had, it was this. If it's, for example. Um, whoops. If it's a plus here, then it doesn't matter which of the two you use. You could use R sine X plus alpha, or it should also work if you do R cos um, X minus alpha, uh, but um, it's always easier to use the one with the pluses in, I think. So I would just use that one um, unless you're specifically told to use this one. So let's go back to this question then and work out the answer. Part A is, is very standard. Uh, just do it the same way um, we did on the other videos. So we'll do the expansion of sine X minus alpha using the addition formula for sine. That gives us sine x cos alpha minus cos x sine alpha. Don't forget there's actually an r here, so there'll be an r here and an r here. This equation would be written down here. And so if we want to pair these up, that pairs with that. So therefore R cos alpha equals 35. And that pairs with that. So that means R sine alpha will equal 12. And we can divide them. So if we divide both of these, Uh, we're going to get tan alpha equals 12 over 35. And if we do inverse tan of that, um, that's going to give us 0 0.33. Make sure you're in radians. It's, it does say up here um, pi over 2. So you know you're going to be in radians. Um, also says it here, actually. Uh, so we need to give this to four significant figures. I think that does work out 
as 0 0.330. But for significant figures, we should add the 0, 03 there. Um, and r squared, r squared will equal 12 squared plus 35 squared. So r will equal 37. So that's what alpha equals, and that's what r equals. Now a question that um, students um, often ask is, can we not just go straight to here? Can we not go straight to here and straight to here? Do we need to go through all of this? And I would say you should do that um, just because if, if you don't, it's very easy to get these two the wrong way around. Okay, so I would always encourage you not to try and do a shortcut. You might see a, a revision guides or something online that says you can just go straight to the highlighted parts, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because although this question's, if you get it wrong, if you get alpha wrong, not only will you lose marks in this question, but in part, it means you you won't get part B or part C completely right either. So don't try and do the shortcut. Always do this bit. Always do this bit at the top here. Okay. Um, so we, we've we've done part A. So let's move on to part B now. So in B, the left hand side of this equation can be written as two times by thirty five sine x minus 12 cos x which is exactly what we had in part a and we know that all of this equals all of this from part a so if we write the, that in we've got 2 times by 37 sine x minus 0 0.3303 um, equals 37 as, as a quick as a general point with these kind of questions, you're never going to be asked to do um, what we did in part A without having to then use it for some reason. So in this case, we're using what we did in part A to solve this equation. Um, in part C, we'll look at how to use that to find uh, the minimum value of something. So if we carry on going, the 37 is going to cancel here. So we'll have two sine x minus 0 0.3303 equals 1 and so sine of this sine of this is going to equal a half and uh, just solve as normal now do inverse sine on your calculators of a half although you might already know that that is 30 degrees or pi over 6 because we need to be in radians for this if you use the cast diagram, um, sine is positive, so we want this and this. Pi over 6 and pi over 6. So we've got that one. That one will be 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6. I think that's all we need in our range. Um, so then if we just add 0 0.3303 to both of those, we will get um, the answer, hopefully, which is 0 0.854 and uh, 2.95. Those are both to three significant figures. Didn't tell us what's around to in part B. So three significant figures. It's usually fine. Now, before we do part C, where we've got to find a minimum value, it might be quite helpful uh, to look at some examples. So how would you find the maximum value of this? Well, this is just the same as 1 sine x plus 3 cos x. And you've got to get it in. Think about if this was in the form R sine x plus alpha what would r equal it doesn't actually matter what alpha is to the maximum or minimum um, if you were to get this in that form you would work out that r would be 1 squared plus 3 squared which is uh, square root of 10 
Um, and so the maximum this can be because so we, if this was in uh, that form, you've got root 10 sine x plus alpha. The maximum sine can ever be um, is 1. And so the maximum this can ever be would be root 10. So the answer to the question is the square root of 10. Have a look at the next one. What's the minimum this can ever be? Well, r would equal uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted. So r would be 5. And so the minimum value would be minus 5. Because the minimum sign can ever be is minus 1. Looking at another one. What's the maximum this can ever be? Well, that's similar to the other one. We're going to have root 10 would be our value of r. Um, and so we're going to have this. So the, the maximum the thing in the bracket can ever be is root 10. And we're then going to do that to the power of 4, which is root 10 times root 10, which is uh, 10, and then times by another 10. So the answer to this is going to be 100. Um, let's just do a couple more. In this one, I would equal 5. And so the maximum value is, oh, sorry, it's a minimum value. So the minimum uh, value in the bracket would be minus 5. And then you do minus 5 cubed, so that would be minus 125 for that one. And I think we've got one more here. Let's just try doing one. This time we want the maximum value of this whole fraction, which means we want the minimum of the denominator. If we want the whole fraction to be at its maximum, we want to divide by as small as possible. Um, so on the denominator, we're going to, if we change this in the form r sine x plus alpha, we would have 5 sine of something in a bracket plus 7. So as usual, the minimum this can ever be is minus 1. So the minimum the denominator could be is minus 5 plus 7, which would be 1 over 2, uh, which is the answer. The minimum is a half. If you use plus 5 here, um, you, could, you could see that we would have... Um, we would have a smaller value for our whole answer, which we don't want. We want the minimum. So the minimum, this can never be as a half. Going back to our actual question for part C, um, we could start by replacing that with this because that's what we found in part A. And now using uh, what we've just done in terms of maximum and minimum values, you can see that if we want uh, the whole fraction to be a minimum, we want the denominator to be a maximum. In other words, we want this to be as big as possible. So the maximum this can ever be is 37. So the whole fraction, the minimum the whole fraction can be, would be 37. We still need to square it because of that. So the minimum this can ever be is this. And so if we type that into a calculator, um, you should get 5. So that is the minimum the whole fraction can be. So the answer to C part 1 is 5. And in part 2, we need to find the smallest positive value of x when this minimum value occurs. Well, this minim minimum value happened when uh, so the minimum happened when this here, this value of sine x equaled, um, equaled 1. Because when that sine value equaled 1, that's where we got our 37 from. So we just need to solve that now. So if you do inverse sine of 1, uh, that will be pi over 2. If we add that over to the other side, if we add uh, 0.3303 over we get the answer, which is 1.9023 uh, significant figures.